The topic for this morning is the test of initiation. And the tarot key, as you can see, is tarot key number 14, temperance. Now, in occultism, in mysticism, we hear much talk about initiation as such. We've all read many books that give us many beautiful fairy tales. We hear all kinds of the most delightful stories about what initiation is, especially in uh, various metaphysical novels. And the result is we get a very erroneous idea regarding this extraordinary state of evolution that does take place amongst human beings and incidentally that takes place, that is, the initiation and therefore tests of initiation, uh, and that takes place sometimes quite often amongst those who've earned the privilege of such tests. I hope you heard me say privilege. Now then, let's try to get this whole idea a little clarified together. In the Kabbalistic method of return, the training, the self-same training, I always like to remind you that was undertaken by Rabbi Jesus the training that helped him to attain to his deepest and highest awarenesses. In this training, we have a very specific point continuously and continuously reiterated. And that point has to do with transmutation or transformation of the personality as an absolute requisite for spiritual unfoldment, or for evolution, for the attainment of higher states of awareness, for, indeed, passing tests of initiation. Now, on the Kabbalistic Tree of Life, I'd like you to note that this particular tarot key joins foundation, the violet sephira, which means sphere of activity of consciousness, it joins foundation to beauty. That's Tarot Key 14 Temperance. That's the path that joins. Now, I'd like to remind you that beauty, which is central to the Kabbalistic Tree of Life, is also allotted to that which we call the seat of the consciousness of Adam. Adam, remember, meaning humanity, all humanity. It is also assigned to the Hebrew word ben, which means son, and specifically son of God. And indeed, this is the point where, or the seat, where the strivings, the aspirations of the soul are aimed towards whether the soul is recognizing this consciously or not. In other words, to become a fully aware son of God or a fully aware offspring of the divine. Uh, to develop the awareness of one's own essential humanity, that is Adam, as being the begotten of the one God. Now humanity, mind you, not one person. Humanity which is Adam. So that all initiation, and initiations certainly do take place. What is initiation? Well, if you wanted to go in for dictionary meaning specifically, you might say it's the beginning something, to initiate. But in occultism, we have a larger meaning that we give it. It certainly means to begin something. Uh, in other words, to undertake something. So that uh, in our work, in the Western Mystery Training System, an initiate is one who has undertaken 
by a vow, and that vow can be a self-vow, uh, not known by another, that is another on the physical plane, or it can be a vow undertaken amongst a group of others who share this aspiration, the aspiration that has to do with making a very specific vow to persevere through trials, through tests, to persevere in every way, shape, and form, to persevere with everything one has, with the depth and height and intensity of one's being in order to attain to union with God, in order to attain the higher states of consciousness with which come, incidentally, the larger powers, and to use these higher states of consciousness as they come, which are various inner initiations, you might say, sometimes having outer cor correlations, to use these higher states of consciousness for the welfare of humanity, to use these increased powers for the protection of other human beings, indeed of all life, for their protection from, guess what, ourselves. We do not stop to realize that this is the complete essence of all training in true spiritual work. Indeed, so much is this the essence, that in our work we make no bones about certain portions of it. For example, we do not hesitate to say to you, beloved ones, if you are not prepared to put this kind of teaching into practice, you're better off leaving us. Go elsewhere. Go to some elementary metaphysics or rejoin uh, the non-aspirant in their worldly interests. You're better off because if you do not have these basic motives or if you are not prepared to do all you can to develop these purified motives because to begin with our motives cannot be pure that pure yet or we wouldn't need evolution purification which you see this angel certainly uh, attending to but at least we have to realize that we're not going to be given a bunch of very potent techniques which like abacadabra you know we're going suddenly will be given the secrets that will make us marvelous and mighty and spiritual and noble and powerful and adored and implored and so on. We're not going to be handed any such mighty secret because, of, that is, of a way to, do, to be that. Because the mighty secret has to do with our learning how to be these things ourselves. No one else and nothing else is going to suddenly confer upon you any of the things you desire. This is the basic, honest, and very definitely reiterated truth. Now, why is a person better off if they're not prepared to at least work at their own purification, self-transmutation, why are they then better off to go elsewhere? It's because when you start just playing around, whether it's a self-deception or not, when you start playing around with fire and haven't learned how to handle fire, you know what's going to happen. You're going to get yourself burned. Uh, when, in other words, you start working with the tarot keys. These keys were designed by the elder brethren for the aid of our evolution, 
Now, part of what they do, they stimulate subconsciousness so intensely when we work with them that uh, this stimulus is something we have to be prepared to handle. We have to be prepared to handle it because when you stimulate water, say you stir up water, you're not go just going to stir up the sparkling clear water on top. You're, gonna, you're going to stimulate the whole bit and the uh, various garbage levels that have sunk to the bottom and are influencing <coughs> the whole, they're going to get stirred also because stirring is stirring. And therefore, this stirring of subconsciousness, which does take place, requires the kind of devotion to truth, the kind of desire for spiritual attainment, which will make us want to become aware of what it is that's being stirred. You've often heard me use the analogy of the boiling of the, the of uh, waters or fluids, uh, which really is taking place right here in this tarot card, you know. And uh, this boiling process does what? It brings the scum to the top. And when we have truly dedicated ourselves to become something more than mere mass atom, but one of the chosen one of the and we can't be chosen unless we call nor can we be chosen after we call in, uh, in the final analysis unless we develop whatever is required that is the abilities with which to serve the abilities which have to do with our temperament, our nature, our being, our thinking, our feeling, our doing, and our failure to do. All of these. Now this is true of everyone, incidentally, in a sense, that is, of the uh, reception of so-called repercussions. Whether the, whether these people are conscious aspirants or not, but it's a matter of degree. It is a matter of degree. When we have been guided, and there's only one guide, that's the higher self, and that's symbolized here by the Archangel Michael on this tarot key. When we are guided <coughs> to an area where we're going to be receiving the methods and the stimulus which will stir these the levels of consciousness. The higher self is certainly putting us through a test for a possible initiation right now. But what is the higher self? Is it something outside of you? Is it? That's where you make the biggest mistake if you think so. Because the Archangel Michael here incidentally also known as the Archangel of the Sun, S-U-N. And remember, the sphere of the activity of the Sun on the, on the Kabbalistic Tree of Life is beauty. S-U-N as well as S-O-N, as begotten, divinely begotten. This Archangel of the Sun is actually uh, what one might call a ray <coughs> of the divine life breath emanating from the higher self, which is your higher self and my higher self, the higher self of humanity, of Adam, albeit each of us are what you might call individualized rays, or we are rays being individualized, because we are individualized yeah. only to the degree that we stop being a response mechanism to the animal nature, which here is being worked <coughs> on, as you can see, by the higher self. And again, I repeat, your higher self. So the test 
of initiation that we receive, which we'll speak a little bit more about in a moment, actually do not come from anything outside. They come from our own higher <coughs> inner true selfhood. And these tests have to be self-applied. It is nothing outside that, give, that gives us either the pain or the joy. Everything is given to us by our own higher self, which is our true selfhood. Now, our problem is, as we've often pointed out, that we identify our selfhood either with this, the personality, and the personality, remember, is the personal portion of the ray that is being grown, transmuted, tested by the higher self. So that we either identify with merely the personality portion, which brings problems, because that makes us, therefore, identify with a something separate, separated from others, so that we feel separate, we feel others are separate, and the moment we feel separate, we hope ourselves we think, feeling, doing, that is damaging to other people. And that's something because it's only to the degree that uh, when we hurt another, it hurts us, which is really a special way of experiencing the unity of God, whether we know it or not. It's only in that, to that, in that measure that we're truly acting from a center of the depth of our being. And when we identify with the personality self, uh, we are then thinking and feeling as isolated and thinking of others as isolated beings. Then another problem is some spiritual aspirants think of their self as being something above, separate and above, uh, whereas the personality is something separate and below. Again then, this is false theory, because if, if, it's, if our center of I, or feeling of uh, I is really in that something up there, uh, as been divided from the something down there, whatever it is, we are. then again, we are placing our selfhood in categories where we are a, a sort of triple schizophrenic, you know, in a sense. And again, how are we going to be responsible and proper to the kind of conditions that must come that have to do with our process? Initiation, remember. Uh, although it always has to do with the fact that we undertake to an initiate is one who hasn't only started but working at it. So every true cult parent, if that parent has taken the oath, is working at developing the transmutation and transformation of consciousness because only through humanity, Adam, only through man, only through the begotten, can the perfection of the attainment of man take place. So that the Hebrew letter here is assigned to wrath, but also assigned to what? Verification. Verification. Now how and why? Well, it's another one of the words that are assigned to the letter is it has to do with support or stability, because it's peg or prop. Now, a prop is what? Something props us up. Notice how this tarot goes from foundation, and foundation therefore can be thought of as the prop or the support of consciousness, of humanity. So we have to see this higher self as being the support or the prop. It ha uh, and the support or the prop has to be tested. Now, in this sense, you see, we have idea of verification. Now, to take this out into, the area, into examination. We're testing foundation, foundation, not the foundation that which we live our lives. Therefore, the Michael, the higher self, has one foot in the water. On solid ground. 
talking and indicating that our higher self, my higher self, is that the life breath, which is the begotten offspring of God, is actually has one portion of its being in the mind stuff. Remember, water is always the mind stuff. In the mind stuff of the and in its concrete manifest on its concrete manifestation. Dr. K says the analogy of being similar to the idea of uh, electricity in a bulb, the light is at the same time connected with the uh, dynamo from which it is coming and the filament from which it is glowing at the same time. To note, which is, is the transmutation of what's taking place, which actually has to do with the complete requirement for the in, uh, passing of the test of initiation. Because notice the eagle. Now, what is the eagle a symbol of? In the eagle is called the higher aspect of Scorpio. So the energy is the reproduction energies are involved here. Back here then we look at the tarot the angel Michael is dropping little yodes. Yodes, remember, amongst other things, are the basis for every single Hebrew letter. That's one of the reasons it's called the flame alphabet. The ancient called in Hebrew flame alphabet. This, these yods then are symbols of all that is, since it is said, created with the Hebrew letters. This is part of the training that's received by true Kabbalists, by the true Western Mystery Training System. It has to do with the fact that these yods, which are a symbol of the flame of God, and remember, the Archangel Michael is the Archangel of the Sun, flame of the fire. With a torch, flame, these yodes are being dropped on the eagle. And if you remember that the eagle also represents the enlightened or the higher level of the reproductive energy, perhaps it will help you to see that you are being told that the tests of initiation are very much involved with what you are with your productive energies. Very much. Indeed, I, even our Eastern brethren make quite a point of that that the coil up Kundalini energy at the base of the spine. And Kundalini, incidentally, is another word for serpent or serpent power, which is also assigned to the uh, Scorpio energy, among other things, and even to the letter summit. That's one of the three uh, aspects of the serpent power. Even our Eastern brethren make it very clear that the, the energy, the reproductive energy, is the energy which on the physical plane brings forth young. It's the same energy with which one experiences liberation in cosmic consciousness. And in the Book of Token, the meditation on this particular tarot, it says the self-declaration of the higher self. I am as one testing thee in the furnace. For what? To bring out the purity of the gold. To burn out the drop, the R-O-S-S, the impure. And this is a process of love, not of hate. Uh, we all know these various texts, and the few who have come in, at least with some kind of going on, we're not going to have to uh, go through very much of the rest before they find one of the most important in self transmutation is to train ourselves to see all of union everywhere the union between two powers, the union between two creatures, and being, doing. Therefore, we undertake a great responsibility within ourselves. The point is, if you are a spiritualist 
never a second that you are not under test by your own higher self. There are times when there are more major tests, in other words, lots of little aspects crowded together, so we face major conditions. But our lives can become something so glorious and eventually good and will, if we'd only remember to walk through our days with the reminder of the tarot key. The Archangel Michael is our own inner higher self. Working upon our energies and animal nature only to the degree that we consciously in the personality areas permit and with it. Remember one of the old calls actions, I shall look upon every circumstance of my life as being a particular dealing of God with my soul. Let's then stop looking upon that which we experience as a wrath. Let's stop looking upon painful experiences as being evidences of something that we should moan about or moan about. Let's stop making negative images in our own emotions. Let's start using every uncomfortable experience as, as being an evidence to us of divine love that is shaping, growing, teaching wisdom or beauty or good. You are being prepared for attainment and initiation at every level. And from the depth, the very depth, from the innermost levels of those who've gone before us, this blessing by the higher self it is there in you right now. And you will be able to say with the Psalms and with the, all the other Kabbalists in the Bible, you will be able to say, if I holy, holy art thou, O Lord, if I climb up into heaven, thou art there. If I descend into hell, thou art there also, there with me. If I take the wings of the morning and back to the uttermost parts of the sea, even there does thy hand guide me. Thy hand holds me. If I take for adventure, the darkness shall cover me. <laughs> even the night is like the Holy, holy art thou, Lord of the universe. Thou holdest me in this light, and my darkness becomes brighter as I pass the initiation testing that thou bringest me. 